No one mistakes former NBA player from Chicago, Tony Allen, for Michael Jordan because he only averaged 8 points a game for his career. But, before a game against the Los Angeles Lakers on February 26, 2016, Kobe Bryant, presented Allen with a pair of autographed shoes that read, to Tony, the best defender I ever faced. But this, is not a story about Tony Allen's mediocre basketball career. We're not talking, Bird vs. Magic, on this channel, we're talking about, making magic with birds, if you know what I mean. This, is the crazy, insane, unbelievable story about Tony Allen, and The Undertaker Vice Lords, versus a gangster from Chicago's West Side named Dana Bostic, aka, Bird. Look, we like Bird, Paris, Kevin McGill, Scott, Worthy, Jabbar, and Magic, oh my god, it's magic. A little after 4 a.m. on Monday, August 18, 2008, two men were fired on as they sat in a Mercedes, outside the Rock and Roll McDonald's. By the time police arrived four minutes later, the Mercedes was on its way to Stroger Hospital. The 29-year-old driver had been shot five times, the passenger, his younger brother, was declared dead on arrival at Stroger. From the little information police were able to piece together at the time, the slaying seemed to have stemmed from an altercation at Excalibur, the then popular nightclub, a couple blocks away. Area residents and bar patrons expressed alarm, noting that shootings don't usually happen in low-crime River North, and certainly not at heavily trafficked tourist stops like the landmark McDonald's. To some, it was the latest sign that bloodshed seemed to be spreading everywhere that summer, even the taste of Chicago had been marred by a deadly shooting, as thousands of people left the fireworks show on the 4th of July. What led to the gunfire at McDonald's, and how it was connected to a string of other violent acts around the city, wouldn't become evident for another two years, after an investigation led deep into a highly profitable heroin ring on the west side. that employed dozens of residents, served thousands of customers from around the Midwest, and had ties to Mexican drug cartels. The survivor of the River North shooting had the attention of authorities, even before he left the hospital. His name was Dana Bostic, and he was the older brother of Curtis Ellis, who'd been fatally shot in the seat next to him. Not long after Bostic was hospitalized, Mahogany Barbie, his longtime girlfriend, rushed in to see him. The couple lived together with their children in suburban Aurora, not far from where she worked as a nurse's assistant. To her, and the couple's friends and family, Bostick was loyal and generous, known for lending money when anyone was short, and organizing block parties or boat outings, for special occasions. Police though, knew him as Bird, at least 6 feet 2 inches tall, and heavy set, with a large round face, and a scar on his forehead, who was a long-time member of the new Breed Street Gang. Investigators learned that earlier that night, Bostick and his brother had been at Excalibur, where they'd scuffled with a group that included, NBA player Tony Allen, a native West Sider, who had just signed a new two-year, $5 million contract with, the Boston Celtics. It wasn't the first time Allen had been in a fight with members of the New Breeds. On August 28, 2005, while at the White Palace Grill restaurant, in Chicago's West Loop, located near downtown Chicago, New Breed member, Nigel Odom, got into a fight with Tony Allen, local drug dealer, Claudia Scoop Fincher, and The Undertaker Vice Lords. Allen, fractured Odom's left eye socket, when he punched him outside the restaurant. The fight, also resulted in fellow new breed member, Mark Twain Tilly Johnson, being shot in the left arm and side, by an unidentified perpetrator. The entire exchange, was captured by a security camera. Allen, was seen fleeing the restaurant a little after 3.30 am. Reportedly, the fight stemmed from an argument between, Allen and Johnson, that took place two weeks prior. All four were at the White Palace, to celebrate then-rookie Will Bynum's new contract with the Boston Celtics. Allen, who was in his second year with the Celtics, was also a teammate of Bynum's at Chicago's Crane High School. Both Johnson and Odom, subsequently sued Allen in civil court, seeking damages of $50,000, each. The two also sued the restaurant, for providing negligent security. According to Odom and Johnson's lawsuit, the brawl started, after an argument between Allen and Johnson when Allen directed a member of his 15-person entourage to attack Johnson, by tapping him on the chest and saying, fuck him up. Allen, was arrested on October 20, 2005. After spending two days in jail, he posted a $150,000 bond, and returned to Boston in time to travel to Connecticut with the rest of the team, in preparation for a preseason game against the New Jersey Nets, on the 22nd. Allen, who earned $1 million that season, was formally charged with aggravated battery on October 26, 2005. 
my gas will detect your homie. Bostick and his brother weren't involved in the 2005 fight, but friends of theirs were, including two men who sued Allen for damages in civil court. As police tried to find out more about the rock and roll McDonald's shooting, Bostick received another visitor in the hospital, Maurice Davis, a fellow member of the new breeds who'd grown up with Bostick and his brother. Davis was a thug. Nicknamed Capone, he was 6 feet 4 inches tall and weighed 235 pounds. He was 22 at the time and had been selling drugs since he was 14, typically while high, since he smoked weed and popped ecstasy pills every day. He'd been incarcerated for heroin possession and domestic battery and had a girlfriend who was just 16. He was also a loyal soldier who was known to bust his gun. Davis had hurried to the hospital as soon as he learned of Ellis's death. As he later recalled, Bostick didn't mince words about what had happened to his brother. He just said, Kurt, got shot in the head. And according to Davis, Bostick, was just as direct about whom he considered responsible. The Takers, or Undertaker Vice Lords, whom the new breeds had been at odds with for years. Bostick and Davis, believed some of them were friends with Tony Allen, and had played a role in the shooting in 2005, in addition to the one earlier that morning. Bostick, left the hospital a few hours after being admitted. That evening, according to Davis, he held a meeting in an apartment he rented for friends at 4019 West Van Buren, a now demolished two-story brick building that was painted green with neat white trim, in a part of West Garfield Park known as K-Town, because the North-South street names all start with K. Davis said he, and most of the other top members of their gang were present as Bostick issued unequivocal orders. Bird said, it was a green light on everybody, Davis recalled. It's time to go to war on, whoever, had something to do with Kurt getting killed. Everyone there knew that Bostick didn't tolerate dissent, according to Davis and others. Stories had circulated for years about his willingness to hurt members of his own organization, who stepped out of line. He told the group that anyone, who didn't want to be part of it, needed to get the fuck home. Nobody did. The new breeds, had been at the center of conflicts over shifting gang alliances, and drug territory for years. The gang, was formed in the 1980s when members of the Black Gangsters, led by George Booney Black Davis, broke away from their alliance with the Gangster Disciples, and Black Gangster Disciples. A splinter group, known as the New Breeds, within the Black Gangsters soon became more prominent, and within a decade, the New Breed Street Gang, was a force to be reckoned with in the city of Chicago. By the 1990s, the New Breeds were notorious for their use of violence to protect heroin and crack territory, especially in vicious gang wars with factions of the Vice Lords. In 1996, 102 people were murdered in the 11th Police District, which includes the neighborhoods of West Humboldt Park and East and West Garfield Park. That figure accounted for more than one of every eight murder victims in the entire city. Look, we like Bird, Parrish, Kevin McGill, Scott, Worthy, Jabari, Magic, oh my God, it's Magic. Bostick was born in 1979, and grew up in the middle of the West Side's toxic drug landscape. Nigga West Side. He was three, when his father was sent to prison. His mother's next long-term boyfriend, Kurt Ellis's father, was bludgeoned to death. Bostick's mother, sank into a heroin addiction and, by most accounts, frequently left her children to fend for themselves. When Bostick was eight, state child welfare workers gave his grandmother custody of the kids, but she was overwhelmed by the 12 people crammed into her one-bedroom apartment. She died within the year. Bostick later said he could recall, regularly eating half a loaf of bread per day, and nothing else. Bostick, sought refuge the first place he could find it, on the street, where neighborhood drug dealers served as mentors and caregivers, buying him pizza, and teaching him how to earn his own spending money. He started selling marijuana at 12. A year later, he took an entry-level job in the heroin trade, making about $8 an hour, to alert street dealers when police were in the area. At age 14, Bostick was placed in a group home, where he said supervision was lax. He stopped going to school and, when he wasn't being held in a juvenile detention facility for carrying a gun and stealing a car, he moved up the hierarchy of the drug trade. At best, he was able to read at a grade school level. In 2000, Bostick, then 20, was arrested near the corner of Pulaski and Gladys, after police said they saw him selling a small baggie of crack. Bostick contested the charge, saying he was simply hanging out with a lifelong friend named, Eliezer Alves. A judge found Bostick guilty, but let him off with a year of probation. It wasn't Bostick's first run-in with police, he'd previously been arrested for gambling, disorderly conduct, 
and unlawful use of a weapon. What was significant this time, though, was his mention of, Elazar Alves. Known on the street as Boudreau, or Dro, Alves controlled drug sales in the blocks around Van Buren and Pulaski, authorities and other dealers said. Bostic had become one of his top deputies, they alleged, with a reputation for securing territory through violence and intimidation. Bostic has always denied the allegations, including in 2002, when he was charged with homicide for the slaying of a member of the rival undertakers. The murder, was one of 648 in Chicago that year, including 70 in the 11th district alone. On May 19, 2002, a new breed member named, Christopher Hunter, aka, Chris Rock, was shot in the leg in a vacant lot, near Gladys and Pulaski. Later that night, a rival undertaker was shot and killed about a mile away, on Kilpatrick. Bostick, claimed he had an alibi that night, he was with one of his neighbors the whole time. But she told police, Bostick didn't come to her house until, well after the Kilpatrick shooting. When police asked her to give a written statement, however, she changed her story and then declined to cooperate further. A couple weeks later, a man who survived the Kilpatrick shooting told police the killer was a guy everyone knew as, Bird, and identified Bostick in a photograph. The witness said he didn't share the information sooner because he was afraid that Bird, or his gang would kill him, according to the police report. The witness, later recanted during the trial. Still, a Cook County judge found Bostick guilty of first-degree murder, but not for long. Bostick's attorney filed a motion asking the judge to reconsider, in light of the shifting witness accounts, and the conviction was reversed a month later. The acquittal, only enhanced Bostick's intimidating street reputation, according to authorities. And by that time, Bostick had a lot at stake that depended on it. In 2000 or 2001, Bostick's younger brother, Ellis, began recruiting Capone, and other old friends to help run a drug operation headed by Boudreaux, Bostick's boss and mentor, at Van Buren and Pulaski. After Boudreaux was shot to death at a neighborhood block party on Father's Day in 2001, Bostick assumed control of his drug operation, and head of his faction of the New Breeds. Despite speculation that Bostick was responsible for Boudreaux's murder, he hosted an annual barbecue on Father's Day in Boudreaux's honor every year, after his death. Bostick's crew controlled heroin sales in a 12-block area bordered by Pulaski Road, Costner Avenue, Congress Parkway, and Jackson Street. The area was located next to the I-290 Eisenhower Expressway, which is the quickest way to get to the western suburbs from the west side of Chicago, known locally as, the Heroin Highway. Bostick's new breeds maintained drug spots along the 4000 block of West Van Buren Street, including a Sitco gas station. He also controlled sales near a Save-A-Lot grocery store, and elevated train stations operated by the Chicago Transit Authority's Blue Line. At the time, it was one of only two routes of the Chicago L system, to run 24 hours a day. And Bostick, quickly established his leadership style. Just like the basketball player with the same name, Bird, didn't tolerate sloppy mistakes. Capone's cousin, late onto Gill, found that out the hard way. Gill, was like the other members of the organization. He'd grown up in the neighborhood under the roughest of conditions. His father was out of the picture. Jill's mother sold heroin, and left his sister to care for him, except that his sister was a heroin addict who often disappeared, leaving him to spend the night by himself in the back of a truck. His grandmother, was incarcerated for killing his aunt. Gil, hung out on the streets with Bostick's brother, Curtis Ellis, and the other guys in the gang, who called him, Bam. He started selling heroin when he was 16. None of that inspired mercy when Gil reported being robbed of $400 in heroin proceeds, that he owed the boss. Bostick didn't believe me, Gil said. As punishment, Bostick, broke Jill's hand with a baseball bat. Tony Allen, was found not guilty of aggravated battery on April 24, 2007, after a two-day trial. Tony Allen, was a professional basketball player, and is more gangster than a lot of so-called street niggas. He went to trial facing five years in jail, but I digress. Meanwhile, the money generated from heroin sales gave Bostick access to a more extravagant lifestyle. By 2008, he had moved to suburban Aurora, Illinois, and had two children with longtime girlfriend, Mahogany Barbie. Barbie, a nursing assistant, allowed him to register many of his assets, including three cars, in her name. Bostick, flaunted his wealth by taking trips to Las Vegas, and renting party buses to celebrate the birthdays of other gang members. While at a party with Bostick, 
Christopher Hunter, and Bostick's brother, Curtis Ellis, in July of 2008, a drunk, and high Capone, shot another partygoer in the stomach, after mistaking the joking interaction between the man, and Ellis, for hostility. Thankfully, the man survived the shooting. On August 18, 2008, Ellis, had the physical altercation with Tony Allen, that ultimately led to his death. Allen, who mistook Ellis for new breed member, Nigel Odom, approached Ellis in the men's room of the nightclub, and accused him of being a snitch for suing him in court for civil damages. Ellis responded by, slapping him. Afterwards, Bostick, and Ellis, were sitting in Bostick's Mercedes-Benz, while parked outside of the Rock and Roll McDonald's, when they were fired upon at about 4.15 a.m. Bostick, was shot five times, but managed to drive himself and Ellis, who was also shot multiple times, to Stroger Hospital, where Ellis was declared dead on arrival. Bostick, was hospitalized in critical condition. After signing himself out of the hospital, Bostick convened a meeting with his top lieutenants to discuss retaliating against those he held responsible for Ellis' murder. They then drove to Undertaker's territory in two car loads, and upon arrival, opened fire on several gang members. It was alleged that Bostick ordered the murder of 25 rivals, one member of the opposition, for each of the 25 years that his brother was alive. The following day, Bostick, specifically directed his enforcers to kill Tony Allen's friend, Claudius Fincher, and at least three other gang members, known by the monikers Bambi, Bud, and Ramon. Three days after Bostick's shooting, Gill, accompanied by his cousin Capone, and Tommy Moore, fatally shot Devon D. Low Taylor, twice after following him to a local gas station. Taylor, was targeted after Moore identified him in traffic as Fincher's cousin. Two days after that, Gill and Moore, were involved in a shootout with police, who intervened immediately following the attempted murder of, more undertakers, including Bambi, outside of a storefront. Phil Scotty and Mike, Phil Shaq and Kobe, my guests will detect your homie. Please, put some pressure on that like button, and subscribe. We're steadily marching towards 5,000 subscribers, and would love for you to join the movement. With his brother gone, Bostick, promoted his sister Tiffany's husband, Lee Floyd, to serve as his second-in-command, according to friends and investigators. Bostick's lifelong friend, Charles Coward, whom everyone called Maniac, also took on more responsibility in making sure street dealers had enough product to sell. On the evening of June 22, 2009, Father's Day, Bostick held what had become the annual barbecue in honor of his predecessor, and friend Boudreaux. Dozens were gathered on a lot behind Melody School, at Congress and Keeler, when a couple young women came by, and informed Bostick's crew that a friend was out of prison, and ready to take over their area of drug sales. Bostick, told them to go away, but Maniac wasn't as level-headed. Maniac slapped one of the girls, friends of the girls showed up as reinforcements, and a full fight broke out. When someone started shooting, a little after midnight, Maniac shot back, but instead of hitting his enemies, he allegedly shot Bostick's new second-in-command, and brother-in-law, Lee Floyd. Police reported that Floyd was dropped off at Stroger Hospital, by a group of males, who then fled. He died early the next morning. Maniac, was arrested four days later, charged with first-degree murder, and being an armed habitual criminal. I bet you already guessed that he would be the first of many gang members, who would agree to act as government cooperators. C1 said, that most members of the New Breeds clique, have their own customer base, authorities later reported, but all of the members of the clique go through C1, and Bostick to purchase heroin. He said their home base was the apartment on Van Buren. On average days, the operation brought in $4,000 to $6,000, on good days, such as the first of the month, they could haul in $10,000, the informant said. In other words, they were selling between 400 and 1,000 dime bags of heroin a day, much of it to buyers who appeared to be from the suburbs or out of state. The informant added that the organization also had its own wholesale customers who often bought larger portions of heroin. The police understood they were looking at a highly profitable street business, with a clear management structure. Bostick, ruled by violence and people weren't going to question his authority. It got to the point where he didn't have to be out there on the street. He lived out in the suburbs, but he was in charge. Bostick, was often supplied with heroin by Eddie White Boy Valentino. Valentino, in turn, was supplied by Eric Fatass Guevara, who headed a narcotics trafficking organization of his own. Guevara, was supplied by the Sinaloa cartel, headed by Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, a drug organization named after the Mexican state where it originated. In October 2009, 
the Chicago Police Department and the Chicago branch of the DEA launched an investigation into Bostick's network called, Operation Birdcage. The investigation included in-person surveillance, information from confidential informants, and wiretaps of cell phones used by various members of the gang. Bostick, was arrested for drunk driving, and drug charges, because he had a little bit of heroin in his pocket, on November 27, 2009. Like a dummy, that only reads at a grade school level, Bostick continued to direct the activities of the gang, while he was detained at the Cook County Jail. Authorities, monitored his phone calls from the jail, until his release on December 12, 2009. A 200-page federal criminal complaint, filed on August 10, 2010, charged Bostick and 15 others with conspiracy to traffic heroin from 2009 to August of 2010. Federal marshals arrested Bostick on Friday the 13th, in August, leaving Nigel Odom's home in Villa Park. Yes, the same Nigel Odom that got his eye, busted wide open by, Tony Allen. Mahogany Barbie, who was with him at the time, was arrested as well, and charged with, and subsequently pleaded guilty to, harboring a fugitive. Maniac, was originally sentenced to 51 years for the murder of Lee Floyd. His murder, and armed habitual criminal convictions were reversed on appeal in 2015, when it was established that, among other things, Lee Floyd may have been accidentally killed by another shooter at the 2009 Father's Day barbecue. Capone, began cooperating with the U.S. Attorney's Office on, December 22, 2010. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison. During Bostick's sentencing hearing, federal marshals removed several people from the courtroom, who they'd witnessed using cell phones to, videotape Capone's testimony. The connect with ties to the Mexican cartel, Guevara, was sentenced to 30 years. The middleman that supplied Bostick, Valentino, who also cooperated, was sentenced to 71 months in prison, which is a little over five and a half years. A local resident, an 83-year-old woman, wrote the judge a letter on Bostick's behalf, which explained that he helped her with her groceries, and insisted that other gang members treated her with respect. Nevertheless, Bostick, was sentenced to 38 years in prison, where he belongs.